Jarrell Dampier, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good, Aaron. Thanks for having me. Uh, absolutely excited to talk to you. Congratulations on the film. Uh, Thank you. Roll, rollout was massive. Like everybody seemed really, really very supportive of it over on our side. So uh, yeah. excited to excited to talk. Um, can I ask you what drew you to the project? How did you end up here in this here Spider Verse drill? <laughs> Yeah, it was completely by accident. Um, <laughs> I, seriously, I was at uh, I was at DreamWorks mm -hmm. storyboarding, and uh, frankly, I loved it there. I didn't really have any intentions of leaving. I don't know if if you've ever toured their campus, but they have this beautiful pond with koi fish in it. It was super zen. I loved drawing next to that pond, and I was really content uh, with my life for a little pocket of time. Um, but there was always this part of me that thought, what am I going to direct? You know, when am I going <laughs> to, I have all these things I'm writing. I have all these ideas. When am I going to get that chance? Um, and then I got a random email from Sony animation saying, we heard you might want to direct from somebody. Um, when can you stop by and talk about it? And it literally, it happened like that. I thought it was a scam. I, I texted a friend. <laughs> yeah. I, I texted a friend like, did you, did you tell Sony about me for real? Or are they just kind of name dropping? And, um, he said, no, it's for real, man. You go check them out and see what they're, see what they're up to. You might like it. And so that's kind of how it happened. It was completely random. I didn't really, um, I, I, I don't want to say I didn't go after it. I think, I think my, my entire life I've been going after it in a way. Right. Um, but the way that it happened was, was really, uh, miraculous. I think it, it felt <laughs> like for me. So I was grateful for that. I mean, it's no less strange than getting bit by a radioactive spider. You know, you just never know what's going to happen. It's, True. it's real. Um, yeah. So once you are aboard, it's it's interesting to be a part of this massive juggernaut uh, yeah. franchise. You know, like Spider-Verse is huge. Our comic uh, Every time one of the movies comes out, the people, they yeah. show up. The was it canon event is in the dictionary now as of late last year, which is just mm -hmm. wild to see so as a cool. nerd. Um, yeah. How did you find a pocket to tell this particular story inside of that like existing universe? Yeah, for that, I really have to give props to Sony, um, to Spa, Sony Pictures Animation. Uh, I feel like they were just open minded to my literally my first idea. Huh. Um, it wasn't now we had kind of workshopped like 20 different ideas, but of the course. one that you see is my first and <laughs> I, I loved it immediately. And it was like, guys, this is the direction. Right. And right away they were like, okay, we, we can see that, but why don't you pitch us some other directions and um, we'll see if your heart kind of goes. And it never did. I pitched a bunch of other directions and then was basically like, all right, when can I get back to my first idea? And, um, and they saw the, the opportunity in it, I think, and trusted me with it. So I, I got to give a lot of props to them. It was my first idea, but I think without the trust, without the resources to do it, you know, I'm just, a, I'm a guy with an idea. So yeah, kudos to Sony. I mean, being the guy with the idea is important though, because I mean, you know, I was going to ask about you having like the conversation with Kevin and working with mm -hmm. the fund, like one instance sparked an entire dialogue about mental health. Having this one yeah. idea is now going to open doors for so many students out yeah. there to have an avenue to discuss these, like, uh, you know, um, sort of hard life experiences or just challenging moments in their lives. So how did, you know, I, I would, I would be curious to, to say, how did you guys end up partnering with Kevin and them over there at the Kevin Love Fund? Um, that was another cool thing that just kind of happened. I, we had, um, so full disclosure, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I was done with this short a long, over a year ago. It's a long time. And, you know, that's, that's, sometimes that's animation. You, you do these things, you have this great idea. Sometimes you finish it and you're sitting on it and you're waiting for partners, you're waiting for the right time, you're waiting for funding, things like that. And it just so happened that their cause and our cause, you know, had this great overlap um, that worked out. And, and I think like superhero culture um pop culture basketball culture is all kind of becoming this uh giant blob right where they're all kind of coming together it's like be being a nerd you said nerd earlier right being a nerd in 2024 is very different um, oh absolutely 
I remember being a nerd in the nineties, right? And it's like seeing guardians of the galaxy on a billboard would have blown my mind in the nineties. Like I, I thought I was the only one that knew about this. Um, <laughs> But in 2024, it's almost like the, I don't know, there was this outcry for the world, I feel like, to heal from some of the things we experienced the last few years. And it just goes to show that that feeling is universal. It's not, it's not just for superhero fans or fans of Miles Morales. You know, it's, it's, it's basketball fans. It's everybody in between. Everybody's going through something. And I think, you know, that's literally what Kevin has been, you know, saying in his, uh, when he's writing his essays about it. And, and I thought that was so cool. So, you know, every now and then on your path, you meet a kindred spirit. You meet somebody whose mission is similar to yours. Doesn't You could be from completely different upbringings, not have anything else in common, but your mission is similar. And I feel like I found that in Kevin. You know, dude's just got a good heart, um, a good vibe. He was completely vulnerable about what happened to him on the basketball court. And I just think that takes a lot of bravery. It takes a lot of vulnerability. And, um, and I look up to that a lot. So I, I couldn't have asked for a better partner, but, you know, to say that I did all this work to make it happen is once again, it's, it's, it, that's not true. I, I wanted to, I put my heart and soul into the short. And then I think everything that was needed to kind of propel that kind of came in. So it was just this magic process that not to say it was easy, but um, at a certain point you're like watching things unfold. And that's kind of how I felt is I, I did my part. I put my heart and soul into the short. And then I'm just like watching it unfold as I take it to the finish line. And that, and Kevin Love fun was a part of that. Right. Exactly. It's not like a, it, 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 it just falls into place as it were. It's like, it just so happens that, you know, the goals align and here we are, we're off. I mean, for me personally, I covered Kevin when he was on Cleveland Cavaliers. Like my mm -hmm. first year covering the team was in 2016. I got a cold email too, out of nice. nowhere and thought it was a scam. Exactly. Yep. So when you were saying that earlier, I was like, that yep, I'm from happens. Cleveland. So I immediately tracked with like, uh, that's the first thing I said to Kevin was 2016, man. I was, you know, I was right. watching. Oh yeah. And, uh, yeah, he had a little laugh about that, but yeah, it's real, you know? It's yeah, real. absolutely. Um, can I ask about Miles Morales? Cause you talked about universality and sort of like mm -hmm. relatability. And I think, being immersed in superhero culture constantly. Like I just came here from writing about fantastic four. Uh, nice. uh, miles is the most relatable, most universally beloved. It's like him and Kamala Khan are like the most relatable, beloved young comics creations of the last 25, probably 30 years. Right. Yeah. What about his story lends itself so well to this mental health, like angle other than, you know, the whole Spider-Man of it all. I feel like Miles is unique even as Spider-Man, right? That's like. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think Miles is just a more approachable Spider-Man, uh, even than Peter, who honestly is one of the most approachable characters. Like I had a, I had an amazing time being a Spider-Man fan growing up, even if I didn't yeah. necessarily see myself physically in Peter or. Of course. You know, Peter's not from the hood. He doesn't know what that's like. He doesn't know about that life, but, but I felt like in a way I had a kindred, kindred spirit with Peter miles to me, I think just validates the fact that anybody can wear the mask. Like that's what makes miles so special. Literally anybody, this spider could not even be a part of your universe and it will find a way to bite you. <laughs> like you, yeah. <laughs> like, and, and, and I do feel like there's this, um, all of us are waiting for that moment in life, right. <clears throat> where we mm -hmm. can be called higher, where we can, I don't know, dig deeper and learn about some bigger cause that we can push for. I think Miles represents that. Um, Miles is also unique in the sense that he doesn't just go with the flow. We've seen in across the Spider Verse, right? That I'm gonna do my when, own thing. Yeah, yeah, when he has a when he has a disagreement, it's not oh, well, okay. I guess this is the way that Spider Man have been doing it, so I'll just fall in line. No, Miles. That maybe Peter would do that. We've seen it. Yeah, Miles ain't doing that. And I think that like our unwillingness to do that in our own lives in 2024 as a people is, is it's getting bigger and bigger. No, nah, I don't want to do that. That doesn't fit me. That doesn't align with my goals. And that's so empowering. I think to see someone so young uh, doing that. And then on top of that, he's just trying to balance everything he's got going on. I, I, Miles is special. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the secret <laughs> sauce is, but yeah. it's, it's no doubt that everybody loves him. There's something about him. To me, it's that, it's that validation. Anybody can put on the mask. And when I see Miles doing it, it makes me believe it. Right. 
and seeing you know? him and seeing him tackle a sort of hard conversation with his father with like an authority figure or like even someone who just cares about you shows young viewers that they too can uh, you know, rise above the challenges that they face. Did you feel like that mapped on with the conversation between him and his dad? Yeah. I mean, it, it's, I think the biggest thing is like, just start, you know, like mm-hmm. one of the, one of the cool things I wanted to make sure is like when, when him and Jefferson are walking away and talking, Yeah, I didn't want anyone thinking, Oh, is he going to tell his dad that he's Spider-Man tonight? No, he, he, he's, he's being open about, the things that are on his mind he's but he's being selective and he's starting somewhere and i think the idea of like just start the conversation don't you don't have to reveal your biggest deepest darkest you can wait for that you can level up to that but just go on that walk get that air get that support let somebody know you're struggling like that's the bigger it's those little tiny movements i think that that lead to bigger shifts over time Right. I think a big key of the conversation you and Kevin had too was like, don't wait till you're old, you know, don't wait till you're old like us to have like this moment of vulnerability or this moment of like sharing with somebody so that you, someone else can know what's going on with you. Cause the only way people can help really is if they're aware of your situation and where you're coming from. And then you'll also find common ground with other people as well. When you sort of open up and have those like that dialogue, does he feel like that that's communicated there as well? Yeah, definitely. And then also like, uh, you get old quick, man, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, I, I keep saying I'm 33. I just turned 33 and somebody referred to the nineties as the late 1900s the other day. And I was like, <laughs> what? I, I literally was like, you know, they're right, but dang, it's like that already. Yeah. It's like that. And, and I feel like, fast. I feel like when you hear these things in your early twenties, you're like, yeah, yeah, I'll deal with my trauma. Whatever, yeah, yeah. Right. I'll, I'll get open about it, man. 13 years is going to go by like that. And if you don't, if you don't deal with it now, it does, it waits for you. It waits for you in that room, just like the shadow figure. So that's the biggest thing I wanted to relay is like the, the journey is long. Just start the journey. It's, it's not that you got to arrive anywhere or, or, or have this significant crazy milestone, those come. But if you just start the journey, man, you start that healing process, you start getting open about those things that are making your heart beat faster and keeping you up at night. I really do think it can lead to a lot of us having some big life changes. Absolutely. And to your point, by the way, that 19th century thing, I have an interview later today with the X-Men peeps Mm -hmm. and to see the X-Men, the anime series called retro, is oh, like yeah. I turn to dust a little yeah, bit more a every time. Piece of me is just like, oh, uh, I have to stay relevant. I have to right, exactly. I'm like, no, I gotta outrun it. Um, speaking right. of outrunning things, how did you the shadow figure, the imagery? I laugh because mm-hmm. I did stuff for like Ruby Gilman, Teenage Kraken, and other things, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, man. Children's animation sometimes get a little scary now. Like it, yeah. it, we're getting back to where we were in the early nineties, where there would be one bit of media that sticks in your brain forever now. And I'm like, yeah, I can't, uh, never going to look at, um, you know, the shadowy corner of a room, the spiders thing where he's laying on the bed is like oh, good, real yeah. harrowing. How did you come up with some of the imagery or like you guys talked about it, how you would manifest that sort of crisis? Yeah. yeah. I think that, um, I think that when you're, when you're using kind of the genre of horror, to me, it's all about powerful imagery, um, mm-hmm. at least for the type that the kind that I like, uh, I thought if I can, if I can create images that stick in people's minds, then we got them right. Cause that's what my favorite movies. I'm thinking about them all week. I just see these images in my mind. I remember like when Nope came out Oh, and, um, you know, everyone was so hot and cold on Nope. I was one of those people. I left the theater. I felt like I completely got what, what, what he was talking about. Was I got about, it. Right. Yeah. I left the theater like, Oh my God, I love that movie. Right. And, and I thought I did, but the days that followed, I could not stop seeing those images and it just made me love it even more. And so when I think about anytime it's like filmmaking, I want, I want those images to stick any chance I can get to show someone something that's going to be burned into their head. That's kind of the goal. I don't know if I was completely successful, but in my mind, this is how I pick those shots. And what does it, what does it feel like when I'm laying on my bed and I look across the room and it's like, is that, is that a person or is that, did I just hang my coat up funny 
And <laughs> right. <laughs> why can't why can't I move and why is it coming towards me? Right. Right. Um, I wanted to relay those things. I hope I did a good job, but that, that's the idea is just powerful imagery. I, I watch things uh, for reference, like the Babadook. Oh. Um, there's, um, there's a, a, a really great Korean uh, horror film called the whaling oh. that I feel like oh. has incredible imagery and the imagery of that movie haunted me for days and i thought oh i'd love to make people feel that way on a smaller scale on a marvel scale and um and the 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 things that i learned just from thinking through those images is crazy if i can bring that feeling to other fans that's what i want Uh, so when you talk about like having a sort of like inspiration or process did you talk to Kemp or Joaquin or any of those guys about like approaches to this did you ever get the chance to pick any of their brains about it being that they're they've been around the block with miles for a while now you know of course yeah I have so I, I did not talk to Joaquin much about this short I okay. do I will say that Joaquin is just a, a gentleman and a scholar in the sense that <laughs> when I did when I did talk to him about other things he's uh constantly dishing out gems um you know, as if they're pebbles, just like throwing right. them and you're just behind <laughs> you go, trying man. to catch them all. <laughs> um, Kemp, Kemp was an incredible, uh, like partner of the short in the sense that he, um, helped me direct the actors. He, uh, he kind of sat me down, talked me through what that looks like. And then kind of, uh, uh basically allowed me to take over. You know, I got to direct Brian Tyree Henry. I got to direct Shamik Moore. Insane. Right. Like, <laughs> right. Like, especially at the time I was like watching Atlanta and, um, I'm a big, you know, Brian Tyree Henry fan. Who oh, is yeah, it, right? of course. So just to see this guy step into the booth and immediately turn into Jefferson was like, wow. And I, but I have Kemp to think for that moment, you know, I was, I was brought into that record. I was taught. I was, um, Kemp sat with me, was very patient. And I just learned how to direct actors which in animation I think can, can, um, can tend to be a little afterthought for people, but it's not, it's, it's very important that those actors feel important and supported and, um, and are, are allowed to dig deep within themselves to get these performances. Right. Kemp is someone who really like unlocked the ability to do that. So I heavily admire him for that. I think he's an incredible filmmaker and I was so grateful for that, you know, time. It, it's not something that he had to do. It wasn't like, it wasn't like he was contractually obligated to help me. You know what I mean? He, <laughs> right. He, he, he on the mainline film would take time out of his day to, to come over, to come over and look at the short and watch it. And, and yeah, it was amazing. I have long answers to every question, by the way, this isn't going to stop. So that's all. Gotta, that's, you, that's you gotta okay. cut me off. Okay. I got and you I don't know. edit me so it doesn't sound like I'm yapping. Well, that and I will do that at least in okay. at least in print. We'll we'll try and cut yeah. it down. This is great though. My viewers are going to be like, right, oh my good. god, so much stuff. I'm the I'm the yap captain. I can okay. go on and on. <laughs> did you talk to Lord and Miller about this thing then? If if Kemp was yes, involved, I did. How, how, did, did did they just come in with their cool Miles Morales Jordans and be like, what's what's going on? Okay, it's great. Basically, it's yeah. So Got Phil it. and Chris came in a few months down the line to view an animatic. We didn't know if they were going to love it or hate it. Mm-hmm. And it turned out that they loved it. They were, you know, they gave me a ton of compliments on it. They they gave me some notes that I think ultimately helped push it to be what it is today, push it to be the best it could be. Um, and because of their support, I was able to make it longer. You know, it was it was originally a two and a half minute short. And now we have, you know, five Five minutes and something second runtime. I think it's seven minutes overall, but Mm -hmm. that freedom was given uh, after the Phil and Chris stamp of approval. And so I'm forever grateful to those guys. That's absolutely awesome. I mean, and and not only that, but you got to show this at a film at the film festival too. Like you got that premiere yeah. beforehand. What was that experience like getting to show it to a room full of people who had like not been intimately, you know, yeah. acquainted with the film? It was wild. It was wild. Like in Annecy in France last year. Yeah. It was like the it was the most famous I had ever felt as a normal person. <laughs> like because you're in a room full of animation fans. It's not oh, just yeah. like people off the street like people are there in france to watch animation and so in a way it felt like um i don't don't watch football but it felt like the super bowl for someone like me it felt like 
it felt like the Mecca of like, everyone's arriving and waiting in line. We had this long queue, hundreds of people to watch the spider within and only like the first, you know, certain amount of people got in, filled all the seats. It was amazing to watch it like that. And then, you know, I, I like to kind of sit backstage and um, find a spot where I can see people's faces. And just watching them watch the movie was so fun for me. All the little gasps and because I think, you you know, people are showing up to see a Spider-Verse short. I don't think they're expecting any any of the stuff that I brought. And I was very kind of tight lipped about what to expect uh, purposefully because every step of, of the way you want to show your cards. You want to say, Oh, we got something scary cooking, but uh, you don't want to do that. Actually. Like I, I wanted to hold all that and just let people experience it for what it is. But the festivals were, were wild. It was so special, so exhausting, um, <laughs> but so worth it. You know, you right. do all this work in the dark and then you get to celebrate it with people. I think that's the, one of the best parts about filmmaking. Absolutely. I mean, and also, I mean, even with the descriptions, I don't know if certain certain viewers are going to really be expecting it, even knowing going in that it's like has some like mental health or like horror style. Yeah, leanings. I pulled I pulled as much verbiage out of those previous synopsis as I possibly could. We got to take that out. No, no, we got to take that out. Don't say that, please. We can't say that. We got to take that out. And, you know, it's, it's this process of like, I think. I think today you want to show your cards so that people are interested. Um, but then I think there's a, I think there's a tactic in, in not showing any as well. You know, there's, there's a, there's a couple ways to garner interest, right? Yeah. I think that, I think that it's a spider verse short. So it's a no brainer that there's millions of people waiting to watch it. Right. Of course. So in my mind, it's all about, it's all about focusing on miles here not the big bombastic action of the films or anything like that. It's about giving us a, a corner of the spider verse that us as fans, we can take a moment, we can sit together, we can see miles in a different point of view. And, um, and maybe we can discuss our mental health while we're at it. Like what's better than that. It's a dream yeah. scenario. I mean, it really is too. And I wanted to ask too about the, the partnership with Sony Picture animation and YouTube because it's free. Yep. And I was like floored when that happened. I was like, what? What are you really like? That's pretty awesome. You know, because uh, I don't know if how, you know, we talked about nope. I don't know when last time you went to a movie theater is. But like if you have more than two people going and you eat anything. Yeah, that's it, rent. Yeah. <laughs> that's rent. <laughs> <Rent's gone. laughs> that rent is gone. <laughs> so how um, did you how did you guys come to that conversation? To be honest, it's not something that I think I have control over. Of course, uh, not. <laughs> as, as as the filmmaker, but I do think as a fan, I'm always trying to take barriers away. Yeah, like like what 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 do people have to do to see this film? Right, and originally it was like, so they got to fly to France. Like that doesn't that doesn't seem right. <laughs> that doesn't work. And then yeah. um, you know that was like temporary, obviously. And then we brought it to L.A. at the um, Chinese theater. So cool. Yeah. So it was like, okay, so they got to, they got to buy a ticket, go to the, all right, cool. But we're, or, but we're in the States now we're getting closer. Now that it's finally made its way to YouTube is a dream come true for me. I, you know, I, I think YouTube it's been in our lives for speaking of these, uh, speaking of the late 1900s, Ooh. YouTube's been, <laughs> YouTube's been around for a while. Right. And, um, yeah. and it's become the place that I kind of take in the most content. I don't know about, I don't know about you. I watch a lot more YouTube than anything else. I watch so many video essays while I'm writing. It's yeah, shameful. it's almost it's almost like I got to, you know, tone it down because it's so accessible. Um, but I love having the short be that accessible. So right. while I didn't, you know, I didn't really have much to do with the decision making in that area. I love the fact that I can go to YouTube right now, type in the spider within, boom, done. I can send that link to anybody. I think there's power in that. I think it's also powerful when... Uh, a corporation like Sony says, you know, we don't need the money from this. Yeah. We just want to put it out and, um, and, you know, do our part in kind of helping the world out and, and putting this kind of creative endeavor up. I think that's dope. Like who, who does that these yeah. days? So, you know, it, I, I think it has more to do with kind of Sony being, a, and, and my intentions being aligned. My intention is that I want the most people to watch the film. I think Sony feels the same way. Absolutely. 
Um, if I may ask, as I get towards the tail end here, have you, what's one piece of feedback from one of the young viewers that you've gotten so far that's like stuck with you the most? Because I know Kevin and them had that event down there in Miami at the, yeah. at the arena with the, with the students. And then of course, now the lesson plan is free to download and the uh, kids and everybody else can go watch the movie. Like, have, has anything you've heard really stuck with you so far? For sure. I mean, they're, they're personal stories. I won't go into super of course detail, not. Yeah. <clears throat> but I will say that the kids that we've been showing the short to and talking with are so brave, mm -hmm. so brave. They're, you know, middle school, high school age, getting open about, um, real, real trauma, you know, and we, we do, uh, some of them, they allow us to kind of keep their story, but exclude their, you know, keep the name anonymous, but, Absolutely. Some of them are just going through some real stuff. And um, I'm just grateful to be able to talk with them, to be able to hear their story. It's it's rare, right? As a, a 33 year old dude, I'm walking past a bus stop. It's not like I'm going to sit here and talk to these high schoolers about their life. And, and, <laughs> and, and you know what I mean? And, and have yeah. this window, have this window into their struggle. Right. But it's funny, like a, a high schooler will watch the short and then talk to me all about it and, wow. and talk to me about what's going on at the house and what they need help with. And, it's, it's fun. It's also like, as a, as a filmmaker, I'm not always like equipped to, I'm not here to educate so much as be, um, I like to think it's like a heart with ears, you know, I'm just a heart with ears. Um, I can't, I can't always say the right answers. I'm trying to figure out my own mental health journey, but what I can do is I can sit here with my ears open. I can sit here and support you. You know, I can, I can bring what I've learned to the table and maybe you can get something out of that. And that's, that's really all what it's about. These kids are incredible. They, they, they will surpass us. You know what I mean? And that's my hope and my dream is that uh, it becomes the cool thing to do in middle school and high school to talk about your mental health. It becomes the cool thing to do to talk about how anxious you are uh, before your, before your big game, it becomes the cool thing to do in the locker room to, uh, to do a little breathing exercise to hype each other up. And, um, you know what I mean? Like, like to, to take that stigma away. I think, I think the biggest thing I've learned from, from the younger generation, I don't want to call them kids anymore. I feel like that's kind of taken away from them and their experience. Yeah. But the thing that I'm getting from them is that they're ready for this. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I feel like when I was a kid and I try to talk to a, a grown up about these things, it's like, Oh, just, you know, what are you talking about? Right. Of course. Right? It's like, they weren't ready. We, we were ready, but they were not ready. And so for the younger generation now, it's like, I want to be ready when they're ready to have those discussions. I want to be, I want to be mature enough and, and along my own journey enough to where I can sit with them and say, I'm ready to have this conversation with you. What's going on? What, what's, what hurts? Yeah. What do you need? How can I help you? And I, I do think that, you know, our generation didn't, exactly have that from the generation above us. I think that's an important thing to bring to the table. So I don't want to put any of their personal stories on blast. They're all incredible. Um, and they're just ready. They're ready for change. They're ready for, to, to better themselves. And, um, and they love miles Morales. So they're my people. <laughs> exactly. That's what it is. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh man. I mean, and, and that's, that, that in itself is enough. You know, you don't need like the personal details. It's like, they're just, yeah. they're, they're, they're here. They, they're ready for the big time. I always say, whenever you reading the stories about them, I'm like, man, what was I doing at 13 years old? Like I really wasn't out oh, here yeah. on nothing, you know? Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> and I think, uh, I think a lot of people are like, what are we going to do to like get these young kids interested or their attention spans are getting shorter. They're da, da, da. provide value to them. And then they'll listen to you, but we keep feeding them the same stuff that we, we think they like. And it's, it's shallow to them. I feel like they want substance. They want to chew on something. They want to, they want to talk about what's going on in their lives, but if they don't have a platform to do it, I don't, I don't think they're going to be the first ones. Yeah. So yeah. we got to be the first ones lead by example in everything we do, including the films we make. That's important to me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, speaking of the films you make, we got a, we got probably got a minute before uh, Beyond the Spider Verse. You think mm -hmm. we can get another short before we get uh, part two? I mean, part three. Excuse me. I would love to do another short. You got to email Sony about it. 
and um, and tell them. I, I would love to. I think I think shorts are so fun, and um, and you can really get in there and make something special in a shorter amount of time. But you know, I I can speak for Sony. They got a lot of cooking, a lot of exciting things coming down the pipeline. So just hold tight. You know, everybody's. Um, I read the comments. I know everybody wanted a new trailer. For oh new my movie. gosh! Ugh. I know. I see it. I want it to, guys. Like I'm a fan <laughs> exactly. too. I want it exactly. to. Exactly. Um, and it's not my intention as the as the creator of the short to uh, to hold you guys back from that 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 big announcement and that trailer you're waiting for. So you know, uh, just uh, just it's a little treat, right. and um, and then we're going to retreat back into the darkness and and do what we do. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm yeah. laughing. I'm like, he's like him and Kevin, and like all the animators, they didn't like take time. Away. Like, no, no, put off Beyond the Spider Verse. The short has to happen. It's like oh, it yeah, was a thing we had like developed, that. guys. Like, <clears throat> mm-hmm. like you said, two years ago or whatever, like mm-hmm. it was already like planned and done and like, you know, trying to figure out like a home for it and things. So, exactly. but you know, but you know, they're going to ask. You know, we did a big post like, oh, it was supposed to come out last weekend. I'm like, yes, every oh, yeah. movie. No, they, can, they can ask all they want. I just won't say anything. I just it's like, <laughs> I got a thing for you guys. Sorry. Um, well, Drill, thank you so much for taking the time. The weather, I really appreciate it. Um, of course. Of course. It's re- Great talking it's, with you. It's really impactful what you guys are doing for uh, young people. And it's something that I think both of us would agree. We wish we had in our lives when we were their age, this sort of outlet. Yeah the sort of platform, all the learning that's happened. So it was really something to be proud of, man. Yeah. We're here now though. You know, it's all good. We're here now. <laughs> Absolutely. Here now. Yeah. All right. Well, thank Great you. Great talking to you. Great talking to you too, man. Peace. See you soon, Aaron. Okay. Peace.